I'm currently here doing a visit for communications um, reasons, updating some equipment there. Uh, but when I'm at a site, I always check whether every string is generating because it's a good thing to check. Um, this is what I have been using up to now. It's a RS Pro Apo 156B. A great clamp meter, love it a lot, but it is a bit big and clunky. Um, and I'll show you. I always have to zero DC amps. So I'm going to clamp on there. There we go. So that's all good. And then this is the new contender. Is that? Hmm. I mean, in principle, it's much easier, but I'm gonna. So it varies a lot depending on where you've got the... It's probably working. What is that actually? Yeah, I mean, hmm. let's go and find another one. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, this one's a bit easier. Okay. But at the same time, <laughs> if it's easy for the big clamp meter, it's easy for the little one. What's that? Yeah, not convinced by this. I mean, the, the reason you'd want a fork is for a situation like this, where it's really difficult to get the big one in, but I'm just a bit like, that doesn't give you a valid reading because you're getting both of them. Yeah, I'm not convinced. What on earth is going on with this? I thought I'd come up with the perfect use case for the fork meter because my main meter like just 
just doesn't fit at all in there. But neither does this one. So that doesn't really help at all. A few final thoughts on the dialogue fork meter. Does it work for me? No. Um, once I finished with this, it is going to go into a toolkit that will be kept somewhere as a not a regular use thing, but will be handy to have occasionally a, a, a meter. Um, but I need to fix it first, a bit more on that later. It's as a concept of fork meter, I think has some benefits. But this particular one I, I don't think is particularly wonderful. I do like the probe storage on the back. That's good. It's a bit fiddly to use and like you do kind of feel like you're abusing it trying to get the probes in. Um, and then they're a bit wibbly wobbly when you do get them in there. But it's, it is kind of nice. The problem is that the probes are attached all the time. So you have to take this junk with you constantly and there's no way of replacing the probes when they get damaged so I have somehow and I have no idea how this happened taken a big chunk out of the insulation on the probe or on the probe lead um that's only happened to me once before but you know that wasn't a big deal because you can just buy some new probes and stick it on but you can't do that with this one what I would say, these are the nicest Unity probes. Sorry, this is a Unity meter inside. These are the nicest Unity probes, probe cables I have ever used. But they're damaged and now I've got a meter with some damaged probes that I can't easily fix. So I'm going to have to use some liquid electrical tape to put over that. And then maybe some, might be able to get some four to one heat shrink over or something. It's going to be a bit of a faff but you know we'll get there um and it'll be fine um i have to say this meter here has really spoilt me for auto ac dc in fact has just spoiled me for many things I, this is a really good meter i and i i like it a lot um i was hoping that this one would be able to fit into smaller spaces and uh, you know under inverters and things where the cables are often tight but but actually it there are a few cases where you can fit this one that you can't fit this one and there are a few cases where you can fit this one but you can't fit this one reality is if you want a meter for small spaces the unity 210 it can both do bigger cables than than the dialogue and fit into small spaces so as a small space meter this is is far far better I think integrated leads are a bad idea. Um, I think they're a bad idea on a meter like this um, because they get damaged and then you can't fix them. I think they're a bad idea on an instrument like this. Um, I think this instrument is a bad idea full stop, but more on that some other time. Um, but, but yeah, they, they when you're trying to use it just in clamp mode, they get in the way. And it's just irritating to have flapping around. Um, when you're using them in, when you're using a meter like this in in voltage measuring mode, this one I can clamp it onto something, and it, it you you can hold it into place. And I know that's not what you're supposed to do, but you can do it, and it's it's quite handy. This one you can put, you know, have the probe sticking out. Um, stove sticking out like that and you can use it you know poke that into a pokey bit but it's a bit wibbly wobbly and i'm not overly keen on doing it like that um also the these caps are a right bugger to get off um they they're tight um which means they're not going to just fall off but yeah i prefer the way that this meter does it um Actually, I have to say, I don't use the leads that came with this meter. I uh, 
have this kit that I have put together of all of the things and some fuses. Um, these are the little, oh, I'll come on to them later. So these are the fluke twisty things. Um, the first set of probes I used that had these were the ones with the integrated cables. They were good. Uh, these are better. Um, having used these, I would never go back to any other sort of probes. They're brilliant. Um, I very rarely use these little things, but they're screw on to make it into a four mil banana. Um, then, you know, you've got the other, these all just plug in. So I've got those bits and crop clips and when you've lost one of your crop clips, presumably on a roof somewhere, they're standard so you can put any other crop clips on. Um, and then I can put MC4 connectors on them and, you know, whatever else I want to. And when these get damaged, so these are slightly damaged, you can see the strain relief here is come off I, these are going to need replacing at some point but you know i'm not having to replace the entire meter it's just a set of fairly cheap leads uh these are the rs pro ones i think um and they're perfectly functional silicon leads these again are quite nice silicon leads with a chunk taken out of them <laughs> which renders this whole meter a bit silly um so yeah it's fine um what are unity leak meters like long term um this one it's an it's an older generation unity i know it says it's a tenma but you know this one says it's a dialogue they're all unities um it's okay um this is i i sound like the sort of person that damages multimeter leads on a regular basis i i generally look after them pretty well but this one is actually on its second set of leads um although it's on its original set of batteries uh this is the one that lives in my car just as a thing to have around when i need it i have to say its dial is becoming a bit iffy um so it sometimes gets a little confused as to what range it's on um, which is not exactly confidence inspiring. You do have to be quite careful of it. Um, something that they have improved on the newer versions is that it defaults to AC. So if you're most people, not me, who AC is a priority, then actually this is probably safer because if you plug that into something, it's going to tell you whether or not it's dangerous. Um, this one, on account of being auto AC DC, um, actually it doesn't matter, y you know, it'll sense whatever, but these ones are both manual AC DC. I don't think that's a big issue. Um, it's, it's just a thing. Um, but, but yeah, longevity of these meters, if you're using it every day, they're cheap enough that, you know, it's okay. If you're only using it occasionally, they'll do you absolutely fine. Um, but it just comes down to, I, I think these are typically going for about 100 quid. It's absolutely not worth that much, um, even though it comes with a free voltage detector pen, which is... Uh, um, Voltage detector pens, I, I'm, uh, anyway. If I wanted a cheap fork meter that did DC, I would buy the, either the Unity or the Tenma version of this that doesn't have the integrated leads. Because, I, I, yeah, I've already explained about leads. If I wanted a fork meter with integrated leads then i would buy one that you can't get in the uk um so there's the qtech um voltage uh continuity and current fork um which will only do ac current 
but the manufacturers of that uh, also make one that does DC. Um, it's currently only available for sale in Switzerland. Um, I know this because I asked them if I could buy one in the UK. Um, and I think that looks like a really interesting tool. And if it does ever come out in the UK, I will try and buy one because I think it looks quite nice. But, you know, there aren't very many manufacturers that do these. Um, Flair do one. Ideal do one. But I just, I don't think it solves any problems that needed solving. That's the thing. And with all of this lot, what do I actually carry with me? This one. Because this does everything I need it to do. And this one doesn't. 